Hello um, everybody and welcome to another edition of The Mayor and I with me Lindsay Khan and Nick Buckley MBE, parliamentary, parliamentary candidate for Oldham East and Saddleworth and Nick I think we've got is it 10 days to go or less? Nine. Nine days to go. Uh, perhaps more importantly, England are <coughs> playing in the Euros this evening. Um, so so far, they've got through to the. We think we're going to get. They're going to get through to the quarterfinals. Um, uh, so we start off. We talk about various things in this, um, but we'll start off today, Nick, talking about how your campaign's going. It's it's going well. Um, it's difficult only having six weeks. I'm not sure how much of an impact I'm making. I'm not getting the same feedback as I did as mayor. Yeah. But again, it's one twenty seventh of the area. Yes. So if you times what I'm getting now by twenty seven, is it the same amount of attention I'm getting? Probably. Yes. So um, yeah. It's yeah, it's difficult. There's no there's no stars in my area. So it's not like I'm up against a big name or someone. Yeah. The Tory candidates are paper candidate, meaning they're not even campaigning. The reform candidates are paper candidates. They're not even campaigning. George Galloway, person from his party, who's a convicted fraudster, fraudster um, she's campaigning. Um, and the Labour Party is campaigning quite a bit, but they've got a machine behind them. So, I, saw, I saw one of the interviews um, that wasn't there were, so you're doing various interviews in the town yeah and but you also have a lady who's going around interviewing yeah, people yeah, yeah. Um, who's, who comes across very well by the way yeah but she was interviewing one of the one of your um, constituents future constituents mm. and um, she said oh, what do you think about the current Labour leader and she said well all I know is I saw her driving around the other day in a car bigger than my house. Yes. And she was quite uh, quite vociferous, this lady, quite anti mm. the Labour leader of the... Uh, is that the Labour leader of the council? Yeah. The Labour MP? No, talk? that was the leader of Oldham Council. The leader of Oldham Council. So she was talking about... So, so why is the leader of Oldham Council driving around in a car bigger than this woman's house? I have no idea why, but she's connected to organised crime. Her boyfriend is a convicted serious criminal. He was a getaway driver for Dale Cregan. He went to jail for driving Dale Cregan to a safe house. He went on then to kill two female police officers. Um, that, that, that's not him pulling up outside. <laughs> <laughs> she's had a car fire bombed while she's been the leader. The corruption in Oldham Council is astounding. Um, it re Her brother is a convicted drug dealer. Um, you, you wouldn't imagine the politicians running Golden Council. Um, and then she's driving around, allegedly, this woman said, in a huge car. Um, as, at the same time, Oldham Council is cutting services, got no money. On the list of councils that's on the verge of bankruptcy, mm. um, Oldham Council is a really good example of a failing council. There you go, folks. So if you if you heard that little um, summary of Oldham Council, please forward this video <coughs> to your friends in Oldham and ask them to vote yeah. for Nick Buckley. And one of my promises, if elected MP, is I can't influence Oldham. I can influence Oldham Council. I can't direct Oldham Council. As an MP, I'll be shining a spotlight You'll on everything them. in yes. Oldham Council. Yeah, I think that'll I'll be, be great. I'll be setting up a. Um, Hotline, so council workers can report waste, incompetence, corruption confidentially to me, directly to me. I'll be embarrassing them, I'll be shining a light on them to show what's going on, where the money's going. So at the next local elections, people can vote differently mm. because you need a better council if services are going to improve. That's my promise to the people. There you go, folks. Uh, Nick has promised <laughs> to expose um, Oldham Council. Um, more importantly... I need Nick to win this election because I vowed not to cut my hair or shave until Nick is in public office. Yeah. So unless you want to see the eventually Gandalf just, Khan. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you need to vote for him and get him into some sort of public office <laughs> just so I can get a haircut. Um, we're going to cover a few things today, um, not necessarily politics based although we are touching on it all relates to politics at some level yeah it? It, all, it is actually all pol political actually now I think about it um, I want to st start with the Just Stop Oil protesters mm. and 
I don't know if you saw it, I, I don't, don't know if our viewers saw it, but Stonehenge, yep. which is um, not that old actually. It's only three and a half thousand years yeah, old. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's not old. Old heritage than, site. It's not older than the uh, pyramids. No. no. Uh, and it's not quite as impressive as the pyramids. No. I mean, I'm not denigrating Stonehenge. I'm just saying it is a World Heritage Site. Yeah. It's a British World Heritage, English mm. World Heritage Site. Everybody goes there for the first time and goes, oh, I'm disappointed with that. Really? Of course you did, yeah. yeah. I did. We're kind of taking the sting out of this story, really. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, anyway, the, um, the Just Stop Oil protesters went and sprayed it with an orange food dye, I think yeah. it was. Uh, and it was very heartening <laughs> to see a couple of local people jump and yeah. drag them off. Yeah. And I think that's happening more and more with these yeah. grotty just stop oil protesters um and they were saying uh and then afterwards it's just up oil people said oh you know we're doing this to raise awareness of oil big oil and all that sort of stuff and we've not damaged them but then apparently the stonehenge custodians said you are damaging them because they have a very very rare lichen growing yeah. on them and in order to get that stuff off it that stuff itself may damage the lichen yeah. Or in order to get it off, they may damage the lichen. Yeah. The lichen protects the stone. So they've actually damaged yeah. one and of And I believe our... they've been studying this lichen for decades. Oh, really? And that's what I right. bet. Yeah, yeah. So, they, so they've actually done some quite serious damage to a, a, a national monument. But I think whilst that was something, and I'm sure most people's reaction to that is that's just totally unnecessary. Outrageous. What was interesting is J.K. Rowling, who is finding her voice... Well, I know you, you're not particularly a fan of J.K. Rowling. I'll tell you about some of that earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think that I just throw that in your general misogyny, yeah. <laughs> Nick, rather than uh, specifically a dislike of J.K. It's not Rowling. misogyny to, to dislike <laughs> a woman. It's misogyny to dislike no, but, all but you, you, Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, true. You only dislike 98% of women, so, so that's fine. Um, so, so I'm sure he'll defend himself <laughs> shortly when, he get, when, he, when I give him a chance. Um, J.K. Rowling, who I actually like, because when I started to wake up yeah. pre-COVID, she just started to be vocal about the trans yeah. issue. Uh, and, um, I might not like her at the end of this. Uh, and uh, about the child mutilators, who, the, yep. the, who are the trans lobby, basically. Um, so she's, she's now weighed into the... Uh, weighted in, is it that correct? Weighed into yeah. the argument uh, about the Just Stop All saying saying basically joking that the just stop oil protesters are basically paid by just by big oil because they never actually do any harm or any damage to any yeah. major oil business anywhere in in the world which i thought whilst was funny it's also incredibly true yeah because they're actually not doing anything at any point to impact or or affect any of the major yeah. oil producers or any of the major uh, climate change damaging countries such as China they're not yeah. doing anything in those areas they're doing it in areas that don't affect big oil at all mm. so I think there's, there's kind of two questions here one is A don't you agree with me that J.K. Rowling is fantastic and B is there a grain of truth in what she's saying um, no and no so the first one is J.K. Rowling amazing did you read her tweet two days ago, no. advising everybody to vote for the Communist Party Great Britain. No. Oh, well. Really? You're a communist supporter, you, mate. Uh, Anna didn't tell me that. My yeah. wife didn't tell me. Yeah. She's, On I Twitter. Mean, she, uh, well, you know I'm not I Twitter. had to go into her profile to make sure it wasn't a fake version of it. Oh, her, really? Because I thought, no, this is a parody account of someone. But I had a blue tick, I thought. I'm you can buy a blue tick now. Yeah. Yeah. But then I went into it making sure, and because... This is probably a joke. I meant myself, well, I kid you if I comment on a joke. Went into it and the Twitter account had 10.5 million followers. And I thought, no, that is J.K. Bowling. I think she's got more than 10.5 million followers. Well, that was enough to make me think it was her. Ronaldo's got 500 million. Right, I have no idea. Okay. Anyway. I'll, I'll check after this. She has yeah. just advised people to vote for the Communist Party. Why? Party. She didn't say. She just something about... Don't vote for the main parties. They're all as bad as each other. Yeah. I would suggest you check out and then really? Communist Party of Great Britain. Really? So. But before I, I dismiss that, <laughs> I need to look at the Communist Party of Great Britain's manifesto. Because I don't want to treat them unfairly, do I? You go, Conway. <laughs> <laughs> then let's talk about Just Stop no, 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 next, next week, the, Nick's going to be a <laughs> member of the Communist Party of Great Britain. I can put my shame pictures back. <laughs> You can embrace the Full idea. Circle. You can embrace the ideology yeah. you've always embraced. So um, just just a pile. 
Yeah. Well, is that the, is that the bit that is going to turn me off J.K. Rowling? The yeah. Comic? yeah. That, that she's wants people to vote for the communists. That, that, no, that doesn't diminish no. it. In, in, See, in, just because a person has a a view you like doesn't mean you like everything else. This no, I, no, I agree. Hitler was yeah. a vegetarian yes. and loved animals. Yes. That's not enough to make people like Hitler. No, I, so just I agree. She's, I mean, J.K. Rowling years ago was very, very anti-man. Yeah. Very anti-man. No, the, no, but for example, Piers Morgan. <laughs> I like some of his views. Yeah. I don't like the man. Yeah. Gary Lineker, who I despise, yeah. he's made some really <clears throat> intelligent comments about Gareth Southgate recently. <clears throat> basically yeah. saying he's an idiot you know yeah. so so i like gary lineker's comments there i don't like gary lineker the man and i don't like yeah. i don't like who do i say piers morgan yeah the man well I you know. talk about jk Dowling as if she's a second coming yes yes yeah. she, she's she's yes yeah, she's she's almost a saint in my <laughs> in my eyes Nick. Uh, <laughs> before i comment and she takes me to court yes let's talk about just stop oil yeah. i get her by, by the way jk i, I did once email your <laughs> website after you'd made a bold statement and about the trans community, and one of your very kind staff emailed me back and said thank you. Yeah. Y you didn't, but one of your very <laughs> kind staff did. But if you have a chance to look over those emails and respond personally, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to pop up for a coffee. Yeah, to they, they were based in Cuba. <laughs> yes, probably a communist. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, <laughs> comrade. Yeah. Type harder. <laughs> Just a poil. I get her point, and it's quite funny, and, it, and you know, it's like, oh, then I thought a bit thing like that before, didn't I? My understanding, this is where I'm going to go a little bit off topic a little bit now with Just Stop Oil. What I think the long-term strategy of Just Stop Oil and all those eco-lunatics is this, and this will explain why they do what they do. They want to annoy the British public so much, and that's why they go for our historical sites, our artwork that's why they don't go to um the oil refineries and stuff like that and um, they want to upset us they want somebody and several of us to turn to violence on them on them mm. the people doing it don't they've got no idea they're being used oh i see but the people behind the behind scenes it, yeah. the eco lunatics who are terrorists want violence they want these people to be assaulted and run over by a car and they're hoping one or two of them will be killed that then is the excuse they need to raise their game and then be a violent terrorist eco lunatic group. They won't call themselves just up oil, then they'll be called something else. And then their defense will be, We've got to do this now because look, you killed three of our yeah, people who were yeah. protected, who were just damaging a picture in the Louvre. Yeah, they weren't killed. doing any harm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're waiting for some of them to die so they can turn to violence. That's interesting. Before 9 11, before the Islamics, the Islamists hit the scene like they have done the number one terrorist group on the fbi watch list and mi5 watch list in the uk was eco green terrorism really they were being investigated because they they were saying our intelligence officers were going these people are going to turn to violence we can see it coming they've done it before in the 70s this is the way they go then islam hit the scene and they got ignored and i think this is what they're doing what and why they're doing it. And these, these because I noticed the perpetrators at Stonehenge, one was an old Indian bloke, yeah. probably an ex-doctor. They're, they're <laughs> usually retired middle class, doctors, middle yeah. class arses or yeah. whatever, who he yeah. could barely stand up. He wasn't even strong enough to hold up the fire yeah. extinguisher. So they're being used as unwitting tools yeah. by this kind of quite sinister yeah. organisation that sits behind them. That's interesting. And I think, uh, and actually, those are the people who are quite easy to kill, aren't they? If you've got some old bloke, some old Indian bloke, ex-doctor, it's sitting in the middle of the road, he is a he is a target to be hit yeah. by because people are getting furious about yeah. their behaviour, and, and that's why they keep pushing yeah. and pushing and pushing yeah. and pushing because they want violence, they want some of them to be hurt and killed, so they can excuse what they're doing next. Yeah. Because it's it is predominantly you're making a really interesting point. It is predominantly little old ladies and little old men. Because mm. there were two old ladies doing something. I can't remember what it was. To try the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta the on the case, trying yeah. to you know <laughs> just doing that. And and you can imagine, yeah, they they could be quite easily attacked and killed. I would mm. imagine by somebody eventually, because people's people are just getting more and more outraged by them. They aren't are. they? I mean, there, I'm not, there would I'm, be a snapping point. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? So you you're saying they reach that point. Then they form a new organisation. 
yeah. and say, right, well, this is we're now far more radical, and we, we have to be now. Yeah. And our excuse is mm. that you, you're killing us. All we're trying we, to do. We is need to stop looking at these groups, thinking they're just idiots. We need to, we need to look behind it and go. Let's presume they're intelligent. What could they get out of doing what they're doing? Yeah. Because these people are not idiots. They're not smashing these things up, knowing they keep upsetting everybody and everybody hates them even more. The, they know that's not going to change anything. There has to be other reasons. Thinking people are nutcases and stupid and idiots is far too easy an answer. And it makes us think, well, we're better than them because yeah. they're just idiots. No, yeah. no. It just means we're not clever enough to think of what's what they're really trying to achieve. Yeah. I could be wrong, but yeah. they're trying to achieve something. Yes. Yeah, that's that's my interpretation of it. Yeah, that's an interesting point. <laughs> and actually, people like J.K. Rowling, who we both adore, um, she in kind of <clears> is fueling <throat> that fire, isn't she? Because if her voice becomes anti, uh, just stop oil, people will feel more inclined to take action against mm. them, won't they? Because it becomes yeah. a general consensus. These people. Why are else you... are they stopping ambulances? Yeah, makes no sense. No, it doesn't. Unless their aim is to upset us so much. Yeah. They must know that's leading to violence. That must yeah. be what they want. Yeah, that's interesting. They've started attacking our historical places now. Yeah. You know, the Magna Carta, yeah. Stonehenge. You know, we're already under attack for mass immigration and the woke agenda. Yeah. And now they're trying... They, they're, they're, they're going to reach a point. They also want to see the collapse of Western democracy and Western yeah. capitalism. Yeah. That's what all these groups have in common. Yeah. Um, and it's quite ironic they attack Stonehenge because their ultimate aim is to have us living back in the Stone Age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, it's... They could be living there if they weren't damaging it, couldn't they, yeah. in a few years' time. I know, it's, it is, I mean, I just find them uh, really grotesque, the Just Stop Hell guys. Um, speaking about grotesque, <laughs> um, the, the pride, pride in London, so Sadiq Khan, who's a Muslim... Um, has promoted, uh, and it's promoted by London, the London Mayor. This, yep. Uh, there's a poster currently in London. I think you've seen a copy of it, yep. and it's basically a young woman who's had her breasts removed, yep. exposing her entire torso, yep. exposing the scars yep. on her torso, and it says something like "pronouns are us." I don't know what it says, <coughs> but but what what I find very upsetting about this is this is a picture of a, of a child or a girl who has been mutilated yeah. on public display by the mayor of London. And, and you know, this, this whole thing, the whole, interesting, we'll talk about uh, Fox and Father later, but Calvin Robinson and Lawrence Fox referred to the trans activist lobby as child mutilators, you know, which is essentially what they are. Yeah. What they are promoting is mutilation of children. But now we've reached a point where a mutilated child, and she's a, obviously she's a young woman now, yeah. Um, is on display on a poster unashamedly in the middle of London. Yeah. Uh, that should, I think just before you, you comment on this, because I, I know you will, ha I'm sure you'll have your views. A couple of years ago, there was an advert in the tube uh, which showed a very attractive woman in a <coughs> bikini and saying, and the advert was something like, "Is are you beach body ready? Mm. And it was taken down because it was regarded as offensive. Yeah, fat shaming. To fat mm, people. Yeah. Right? So so we've reached a stage now in London, just to put this in context, we've reached a stage now in London where a picture of a, of a healthy, non-mutilated woman in a bikini, in a bikini, yeah. so her breasts are not exposed, cannot be displayed. Yeah. But a woman, a girl who has been mutilated, surgically mutilated, can be shown topless mm. uh, with the full support of the London yeah. Mayor. What the hell's happening, Nick? Again, this is just woke lunacy. Um, this has been going on for several years now. There was a, a campaign a year ago, two years ago maybe, Max, for Costa Coffee, mm. and they had these cartoon characters on the beach and different people in different situations drinking Costa Coffee, and one of the characters was a young man on the beach in shorts with two scars under his breasts. Highlighting that that's where his breasts, her breasts would have been before he was mutilated. So the trans thing has become extremely trendy and is seen as a lifestyle choice. So who are we to tell people 
they shouldn't have this done. We celebrate different, we celebrate disabled people, people with amputees, um, we have them in advertisements, we have disabled people in wheelchairs in advertisements. Why can't we have a trans young man in an advertisement? Um, and that's the logic of where they Yeah, but they're, they're two very, very different things. Somebody in a wheelchair or an amputee is not <laughs> there as they volunteered to have their leg amputated or volunteered to be disabled or whatever. They are there not through choice, but through circumstance and fate or whatever. This is a picture of a, of a woman who has chosen to be, yeah. has been where a, a doctor has, has chosen to, to mutilate a yeah. young woman knowing she's perfectly healthy yeah. and done that. And then they're displaying this, uh, uh, overtly displaying this as a, good, yeah. as a great thing. Because they, that's what they believe. They believe it's yeah. a great thing, a good thing. It's a liberating thing. It was wrong. Ten years ago, we started getting women who had the breasts removed, but removed for cancer, mm. showing off their scars. Yeah. Because they were saying, that's liberating. So all these trendy things we've done le breaks down social norms a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then we end up where we end up. Mm. These things don't happen overnight. These are small little changes over decades. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a very interesting point. I do remember those adverts where women who'd had breast cancer yeah. would be showing their scar, which, which in a way... Why do we want to see women's scars? No, I, well, I, I think <clears throat> you and I have touched on this before. There's a word, isn't there, decorum, mm. you and I talk about. There's a level of decorum required in life. And you're right, once you cross that line and start showing things like women who've got scars or yeah. whatever, then it, you're right, it is only a short step to then showing an image of somebody who has been deliberately mutilated yeah. in, in that situation. And, and that's what it is. So we, we've seen to have crossed the line now, don't we? I think the, the issue for me is, the issue, more the issue for me <coughs> is that this isn't an advert. Like, I mean, you said before that advert was for, what did you Costa say? Coffee. Costa Coffee. Costa Coffee. You can imagine some dopey advertising yeah. person. In this Costa was advertising Coffee. the fact itself. Yeah, the fact itself, but yeah. by the mayor of London. Yeah. Sadiq Khan endorsed that message. Yeah. That's but, why I don't think the mayor is an Islamist. Sadiq Khan is not an Islamist. Sadiq Khan is a moderate Muslim, a woke Muslim, um, because he believes in far too much of this crap to be a radical Muslim. Yeah, but you, you do know that in Iran, um, <clears throat> they don't have any gay people, but they have lots of trans people. Yeah. Because what's acceptable in Iran, which is an extreme, we believe, I'm going yeah. carefully, I'm doing the same thing we do in the UK now. I'm saying an extreme Muslim organisation, probably with little or no evidence. But the, which we believe to be an extreme Muslim or if it's somebody... A, it's a death penalty to be gay in Iran. Correct. So, so what you'd they, be given a choice. So what you say is, I'm not gay, I'm trans. <clears throat> yeah? Yeah. So I'm a man, I like... Well, the, the courts do it as well. The, the courts yeah. give you a yeah. choice. So you've been convicted of homosexuality, um, it's death penalty, or you can transition to a woman. And it's like, <laughs> not much of a choice, is there? They shouldn't be stoned to death or hung to death. Yes. So Iran has the second largest population of trans women in yes. the world. Yeah. Only, only slightly behind Thailand. So why um, wouldn't Sadiq Khan then support that? Well, it's not just that he supports the LGBT, but he supports all the woke nonsense. He's not. Yeah. He's not a radical. He's, he's never shown me he's a radical Islamist. No. He's just shown me he's a woke fool. Well, I think to me he's in the same camp as Angela Reno. I just think he's a bit thick. That's that's w what I think. But he's going to be <clears> voted in time and time again as mayor because the entire most of London is now basically left wing, isn't it? He and there's a very good chance he won't win next time because Labour will be in government. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So whoever's in government always gets the blame for everything. Yeah. So that's why we have lots of Labour councils, lots of Labour mayors around the country because it's always Tories, Tories, Tories. It's hard to get elected as a Labour politician when you go, oh, we, oh yeah, it's Labour in the power. Yeah. Everything's still crap. Yeah, hopefully. Um, so, <clears throat> so just to summarise on that, you're not really that shocked by that poster? No. I was not, quite shocked. Not myself. shocked at all. All right. I, I kind of thought we crossed another divide when that happened, but thinking back on it, you're right. There are there are these things are happening, aren't they? Yeah. Um, 
talking about um, all uber woke people, such as um, such as uh, Sadiq Khan, one of my favourite topics, or one of my favourite dislikes, Gareth <coughs> Southgate. Um, and you, I know you're you kind of lost interest in the Euros. I know, um, so you've not been watching. But Gareth Southgate, uh, in the last England game, we played terribly mm. against. Um, oh my gosh, I've forgotten who we're playing against now. Anyway, Serbia. It was, a, or something. It was Serbia. It was a one-all draw against a team that are ranked twenty-fifth or something well, like that, and we're ranked first. Are we? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, so England are ranked. Uh, were the favourites well. to win? I don't know anymore. So he's had an abysmal performance in the first game, an abysmal performance in the second game. He, his team, even <coughs> Gary Lineker, who, as, as I said before, I despise, uh, but made some very intelligent comments. And on, on Gary Lineker's podcast, which is not BBC affiliated, <coughs> he actually said the game was shit and yeah. we played shit. He used those, those particular yeah. words, which obviously he couldn't use on the BBC. And basically even uh, Harry Kane, who was taken off, substituted off, Said we had we didn't have a game plan. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know how to press. And so suddenly, and it's strange actually because mm. Gary Gareth Southgate was like a saint, wasn't he? And he was he was all the uber woke. He was mm. a take the knee. He was one of the main drivers of take the knee and yeah, all yeah, that yeah. sort of that's stuff. That's why I stopped watching England. Yeah, that's why you stopped watching England. Uber woke. So there's been a bunch of criticism that's come out about him for the first time ever. Mm. <clears throat> but he's such an imbecile. He's even saying, "Oh, I'm not listening to the criticism." And he said something hilarious in his press conference yesterday. He said, he, he said, I'm, I'm my own biggest critics, my own biggest critic. And so are all the England players, <laughs> meaning they, meaning he was trying to say <laughs> there, but he ended up saying like that. He's, and they probably are his biggest critics. I should imagine the England players despise him. He plays people out of position. And then even after the match, he said, we're missing Calvin Phillips. Calvin Phillips is a midfield player who'd last played for England three years ago or something. <laughs> And so it's not just an insult, it's just not... It's he's not just looking for excuses. Looking for excuses. But also, he's basically saying the team he's got is crap. Yeah. yeah so he's, he's just, he is just, again, <clears throat> low intelligence, somehow has ended up in the right position for political <clears throat> reasons or, or whatever. But I think, I sent you an article, because I read something, some, it was in the Times or the Telegraph, and people write comments. Um, and you, you may not may remember that we were knocked out of the finals of the Euros last time. On penalties. On penalties. And what this individual wrote was basically that it was just a comment, but I thought it was very well written. And it said, you know, it's about time this Uber woke guy to go, whatever. He only, he deliberately played three, he allowed three black players to take penalties in the Euro finals as a virtue signaling. Mm. Um, and I read that. And I, I, I that, do. That, that was the BLM. That was the BLM time. It was yeah. just as the BLM was happening. Yeah. And that, I read that and I remember that he did <laughs> select three or more black players to take the penalty. One of them, I believe, had never taken a penalty before in his life. I think it was... Um, it the was Arsenal guy. Saka. No, Saka, I think he... Is, well, I don't know. I did some... Oh, there's only taken one or two. Yes, there I, think, I think there were... That yeah. ex Saka was still very young, not yeah. very experienced. Yeah. Hadn't been in a... Uh, certainly hadn't been in a penalty situation. Yeah. So he was a penalty taker, Saka, in, in Southgate's defence, no. but he was very inexperienced. Yeah. And I read that and I thought, you, could, could that be true? Do you think that could be true? Yeah, not as a conscious decision. Right. But yeah. as, you know, when you're making these decisions, there's lots and lots of bits of information trying to help you make that decision. I'm sure that was one of them. Um, yes. BLM would take, would, how is it going to look now after taking the knee that I'm going to put five white players to take a penalty to win the competition. How's that helping black lives? That I put five people to take a penalty who are white and we win. I need some black players in there uh, in case we win. Yeah, I can see that being a judgment call, yeah. I, I, now you say <coughs> that, because I, I was <coughs> thinking these things are kind of black and white, but forgive the pun. Yeah. But <coughs> I bet, it, I wonder if that, I think that might have formulated some of mm. this decision. Yeah, but I've never read it before. And I think it's kind of testimony to the fact that things are changing now, that a comment like that is not deleted. Yes. Um, uh, well, you said that four years ago, police were knocked on your door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Racist. Yeah, I agree. So after the Man U player missed that penalty. Yeah, Rashford. And somebody sprayed over his portrait on the wall yes. in Manchester. Yeah. And they wrote, shit in the bucket. 
Yes, yeah. That then got taped over and a racist incident was logged by the police and the police investigated it as a racist incident. Yeah. The word shit in the bucket. Yeah, it's not racist. No. Yeah. yeah. And then we had all those candles there. Yeah. People singing hope not hate and oh come by ya my lord. And it was like, it had nothing to do with me, but it was a Black Lives Matter either, and everybody was meant. Yeah, but I think <clears> I, I think two things. One is, you're right, that comment would not have been, <clears> would have been deleted, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there were a few people <clears> below it's calling him a racist or whatever, but I, I think there is a shift now that people are talking about things like that. I think, and even people are now laying into Gareth Southgate, because I think he's, his career's been sustained by the Black Lives Matter thing. His His... Tenure at England <coughs> yeah. because he was so um, woke, I'll take yeah. the knee and all that jazz as well. Because it, the, the, all that virtue signaling yeah. played into the idea he was saintly or whatever. I think there's more reality out there now. And also, it's almost impossible for him to beat where he got last time. He got to the final last he time, did. the last competition. Yeah. With arguably not as good players. Yeah. The only way he beats that is by winning. Yeah. So no matter what he does now, he'll get more criticism anyway because yeah. he'll, he's never going to get in the final again, probably. Yeah. And so he's always, that, that, that's what people are looking up to now. Yeah. You were a penalty away from us winning yeah. uh, the World Cup, whatever it was. Yeah. So he, he will get more. But I think before that, you're right, he was protected because he was the walk football coach. Yeah. And Matt and kneeling and all that sort of stuff. And he was hard to touch then. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a white saviour, don't yeah, touch yeah, him. Yeah, correct. But I think he's in, in for hiding for not. This will be his, probably be his last competition. Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, I'm actually hoping he gets sacked halfway through. <laughs> they don't do I hope they do really. But I mean, by the way, <laughs> now, gentle viewers, they are playing tonight, so that we, we can't let this conversation go on too long. But. I'm hope that it has happened before. Has it in the African in an African Africa's Cup a few years ago? The <clears throat> manager of the Ivory Coast was taken <clears throat> off halfway through, replaced, yeah. <clears throat> and they went on to win. Yeah, but to be fair, that's the African Cup of Nations. Racist. Some some African football teams play a game, and by the time the game is over, their country is cooed. Had a coup. <laughs> They've got and a, and a new ruler. A, a new ruler. So anything can happen in the Cup of Nations in Africa. <laughs> I can only apologise for Nick's <laughs> racism views. Uh, speaking of racism, <coughs> Afrophobia. That's what that Afro is. Afro oh, we yeah, talked about, that, about didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Afrophobia. I think that got quite a lot of views. <laughs> um, talking about extreme racism. So we we both know Calvin Robinson. You know him better than I do. You've actually had him at, at doing a presentation at one of your events. events. Yeah, I've been on his podcast, he's been on my podcast, yeah. and has, yeah. I've done live stuff with him. I, I've spoken to him at <laughs> that, at that do actually, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I really like him, yeah, and uh, my wife really likes him, he's, he's a, a very engaging, mm. charismatic individual, very tall. Yeah, he is tall. I think he must be, what is he, six foot eight or something, he's massive. I, I think it's like six four, six five, but then he's got his six inch afro. He's, he's got, got the afro, he's, oh, he's got rid of his afro. Yeah, now. but when yeah. he had the afro, he's like almost seven foot. Yeah. So, he, so my understanding is he's actually is he a vicar or a pre? He's some, he's, he's got he, some sort of religion. Deacon. He's a deacon of the of Christian the, Church of the Free Church of England or something. Yeah. So, so he's a, he's a Christian. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. a Christian, and some of his I would say therefore some of my views will will you know he has very strong views on <clears> abortion and all that yeah. all, all those. Things. I would say he's a very conservative Christian. A very conservative he, Christian. All these judgments come out the Bible. Yes. Yeah. So so so. <clears throat> So, as I would suspect most Christians, my views chime with quite a lot of he said, as, and I've, I think I've said this before, I regard myself yeah. as a Christian. A lot of my views chime with his, a lot of my views don't chime with his, and I think you're the same with him, aren't you? I think you agree with a lot of what he says. Yeah, yeah. And then, he was particularly vocal during COVID. Yeah. Uh, you know, thought the, thought the lockdowns were nonsense, and I, and I think he had his religious slant on it. But anyway, he, he, he and Lawrence Fox are very good friends. And they now do a, a weekly podcast yeah. called Fox and Father, yeah. which I've been trying to listen to, but I, I, but I was driving somewhere the other day with my wife and, and uh, I listened to an edition of it and they were talking. And Lawrence Fox, most people describe him as a racist right wing. In fact, he isn't. If you actually listen to Lawrence Fox, I don't think you can find one <laughs> racist, sex. he's said sexist things, definitely, but he's definitely not in my view, said anything right-wing or, or racist that I've ever heard. He's, I think he's actually quite moderate, mm. is Lawrence Fox. 
he was on the march with Tommy Robinson, mm. which will, won't have done him any favours with the people who regard him as 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 a, as a racist and a bigot. Um, so he was talking with Calvin Robinson, and they were talking about uh, various things, and somehow the subject got on some Muslims. <coughs> and Calvin Robinson said something that actually quite quite shocked me, and, and I would be interested to know what your thoughts are, because I'm, I'm generally defending people like Calvin Robinson and Lawrence Fox, people like that, and saying mm. they're not extremes. We talked about Nigel Farage mm. being called an extremist by an idiot uh, the other week. But what Gar Calvin Robinson said, which I was really very shocked at, he said, I, I want all, all, he didn't caveat that yeah. with anything, he said, I want all Pakistani Muslims, um, what's the word I'm looking for, deported. Yeah. All, I believe all Pakistani Muslims could, should be deported. He then went on into a long explanation about how because of inbreeding in Pakistan, they have the highest percentage of deformities, mental yeah. illnesses or whatever. And he said that's part of the reason the NHS has been impacted because of the massively high proportion, higher proportion. And also, apparently, this is when my wife told me later, and I'm pretty sure this is true, the biggest percentage of immigrants or the biggest number of immigrants in the last five years mm. have been from Pakistan. Mm. This is not illegal immigrants, by the way. This is <clears throat> approved yeah. immigrants, yeah. basically. So I went from having no view at all <clears throat> on Pakistani Muslims to being presented with a whole bunch of ideas in a very short yeah. space of time. A, from Calvin Robinson, that he believes they are such a heinous mm. curse on this country, they should all be deported. B, they have various levels of illnesses as a result of inbreeding within their communities in Pakistan, such that they are being there. This is an impact. Mm. This is impacting both on their society, but also on uh, the National yeah. Health Service. And C, that they're the biggest immigrant group we've had into the country in the last few years. So though, all three of those things, those views and those actual statistics, if you like, I wasn't aware of. So I know for a fact the top three countries for immigration to the UK is Pakistan, India, Nigeria. I don't know where they are in the top three. So if he says Pakistan's number one, it might yeah, be number yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. Um, in breeding, so Pakistani community have a big issue with first cousin marriage. Um, and the reason why they have a problem with it is because it's tribal. Uh, tribes want to stay with themselves so you'll marry your cousin because that keeps the wealth of the tribe and we're all tribal and we're going to look after each other we don't want outsiders coming into our family so people marry their first cousins huge issue in Pakistan huge issue in the Pakistani community in the UK over 50% of all severely deformed babies born in the UK are Pakistani from first cousin marriages over 50% Joking. No. <clears throat> fifty sir again, fifty percent of, of all severely disabled babies born in the UK are Pakistani. First cousin marriage. Wow. So you can Why do I not know this? I don't know. Um No, you gave me the wrong answer there. <laughs> the media won't allow us the media don't talk about it. Well mainstream that. media we never talk about it, but I watch yeah. other stuff and this has been yeah, 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 We've yeah. known this for decades. Yeah. This is it new. I wasn't trying to show my ignorance yeah. I was hoping you'd say <laughs> the reason you don't know about this, Lindsay, is because this is suppressed yeah. by the mainstream media. So you can imagine the impact that has on the NHS, just for the babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these these babies now need care for the rest of their lives, paid for by the NHS. Wow. And benefit system. We also spend now a couple of billion now on knife crime in the NHS. Why? Because we import other cultures that are stabbing everybody. So the NHS pays for other cultures and, and mass migration. We're paying for it. Deporting Pakistani Muslims. So the first thing I'd have to ask him, I've asked you, would be, did he say deport all British Pakistani Muslims or deport all Pakistani Muslims? All Pakistani Muslims. So what he means there are people who are not British citizens. Yes, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. So is that how extreme is that? I don't Although know. I don't think, I think no, because <laughs> I think Lawrence Fox asked him the question. He said, no, all Pakistani Muslims. That's a bit we need clarifying. Yes. Did he mean British Pakistani Muslims? And I, I, I don't, I, I'd be shocked if he, if he meant them. That's well. a bit. I don't. So as an Anglo, <laughs> as a half Indian, yeah. second generation, <clears throat> potentially. If I was, my dad had been in Pakistan. Yeah. He's not. But if he had been, that would mean I would be deported. 
Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's why I was shocked, I think. And him. What happens if we then well, say... Well, he's not any, Pakistani. No, if we said anybody of Caribbean heritage because of the violence. Yes. Well, is he going to be deported? Yeah. So I, I think he means foreign nationals. Pakistani foreign nationals. I'm, I'm defending him now, but I don't know what he said. Yeah, but, but he should have clarified that. So that needs clarifying. <clears throat> if he means British nationals, people born in this country of Pakistani Muslim descent, then the answer is no. All right? Unless, well, no. Unless they've got dual nav- dual he- dual citizenship and they commit horrendous crime. Yeah. Then you deport them. Yeah. If he means, I mean, we need to have a conversation over the next 10 years. Let's say we stop mass immigration tomorrow. Yeah. The next conversation is who stays? Yes. Because I don't think they all stay. No. I think we need a conversation where we need to say to many people, time you went home. Mm. Time you went home now, back to Nigeria, mm. take your family with you. Time you went home, back to India, back to Pakistan, back to Poland. Mm. I'm not, I don't know who it, who these people are. I'm not sure what the metric would be to decide who stays, who's gone. I'm giving that no thought because I'm never going to make that decision. So mm. waste of time. But, you never know, Nick. But there will be a time where we need to start saying to some people, you all need to go, you know, you, you need to go home. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, Lawrence Fox seem quite shocked mm. by this because I don't think he he doesn't have very he doesn't have those extreme <clears> views. <throat> I think he was quite shocked by the direction the conversation took the only thing I would say that's of interest here and uh, by the way I don't have a view on this I, I, but I need to do more work on this because I didn't even know about the 50% of if, uh, severely severely say, baby, uh, yeah. I didn't I didn't again as you say why don't you know about this Lindsay not because I'm ignorant Nick but thank you for protecting me it's because I've never been made aware of these stats mm. or but clearly Calvin Romson has mm. or I'm guessing he has from what I can remember that I'm, this might this this figure might be wrong I think it's something like 25% of all Pakistani Muslim marriages in the UK are first cousins wow 25% how many Pakistani Muslims are there in this country? Oh, I don't know. I think it's the four million Muslims in the country. Right. And how many of those are Pakistanis in majority? I don't know. And are the Pakistani <coughs> Muslims the ones who are in places like Oldham East <coughs> and um, uh, where did where do we have the uh, grooming gangs? Rochdale. Yeah, Rochdale. Yeah. Is that Pakistan? Are those Pakistani Muslims? Pre- predominantly, because something like seventy eight percent of everyone arrested or convicted for the grooming gangs were of Pakistani Muslim descent. So presumably his comment, there's an informed knowledge behind Calvin Robinson's comment here. Yeah. I, I think he means... Non-British born. Yeah, Pakistani I think he means new immigrants. Born. Yeah. Over the last 10 years, we've imported several million Pakistani Muslims into this country, and I think he's saying they all need to go on. Wow. Now... What's quite interesting is Gert Wilders mm. is now the most prominent politician in Holland. Mm. He says exactly the same thing about the Moroccans, mm. Moroccan immigrants. So what we're seeing now, which is something we've not seen for a long time, is people <coughs> like, respected people, like Calvin Robinson, like Gert, Gert mm. Wilders has got to be respected. He's won the votes <laughs> of the people, hasn't he, in, yep. in Holland actually making statements, not general statements, but specific statements about racial types or racial, not racial, sorry. Yeah, that's, no, I'm looking for that. Racial or country-based groups to be deported. We've seemed to have lost track in the West that just because you come here doesn't mean you have a right to stay here. And we think now, once you get to a country, you can stay there. Well, no. You're always a guest in that country. Always a guest. And when the host of that country decides they don't want you anymore, they have every right to throw you out. Mm. And that's been the right of every country ever to exist. Mm. The last 50 years, we just seem to have forgotten it. But we will remember it over the next 10, 20 years. And I foresee across Europe, the UK, America... There will be deportations. How many, I don't know, but there will be deportations. I, sus- I suppose the thing that I'm finding difficult to deal with, <clears> and hopefully our, our gentle viewers can, can comment, is both Calvin Robinson and Gert Wilders are identifying a racial group as opposed to 
Okay. No, it, 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 it's, they're identifying national groups. Not national racial groups. groups. So then, of course, and it, of course, we hate the way all conversations go back to Hitler and the Jews yeah. and everything like that. But isn't that what happened with Hitler and the Jews? He basically attributed <coughs> characteristics and behaviours mm. to a racial, to a national yeah. group. I'm choosing my words probably not carefully enough at the moment. Yeah. And then, as a result of that, that group were then persecuted, persecuted, yeah. exterminated, or whatever yeah. it might be. What is the difference? If there is a difference. Huge difference. A huge difference is Jews were German citizens and had lived there for generations and centuries. Yes, correct. What these new politicians are talking about are guests in our country. Right. You invite you in I come to your house for a meal. Yes. And I decide not to leave. Yes. Are you a racist kicking me out? No, you're the host, it's your house. Yes. You invited me in. Yes. You have every right at any time during that evening to say, Nick, it's time you leave now. Yes. And that's the difference. And that's what... Although happened. last time you were around, you, you wouldn't leave. <laughs> I now. wouldn't leave. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yes. So there, there, there is a difference. I can see people being worried about it. Yes. Um, and the optics won't look good because when we say there'll be deportations, who do we mean? We mean black and brown people. Of course we do. Yeah. Because they come from the third world and they're the ones we want to get rid of. Yeah. We won't be deporting Americans out the UK. We won't be deporting French out the UK. It will be people from India, Nigeria, Pakistan, and lots of other countries. And yeah. they'll all be black and brown countries. So the criticism of racism will be easily made. And for people who are not deep thinkers, it'll look like it is racism. Yeah. Because why are you only deporting... Like, well, no, it's not about that. It's about they're the ones who on benefits the most, who commit most crime, who are culturally very different from us. Um, they're the reasons why we're kicking them out. And that's what that's what Gert Wilders was saying when he was quizzed by, a, again, these, I mean, these left-wing... Did you see the stats from Paris the other day? I think it was Paris. 78% of all rapes in Paris are immigrants. I have heard something, that is shocking, isn't it? 78% of all rapes in Paris, immigrants. Wow. Wow. And it's happening in the UK, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gert Wilders, who was being interviewed at the time by a progressive <laughs> media type, and the, the problem with these progressive media type journalists now, because they've never been challenged properly, mm. when they are challenged by something like Farage yeah. or Gert Wilders, they just wipe the floor with them. Um, and he, and the guy said, oh, you, aren't you being racist? He said, well, no. And he went, reeled off a bunch of stats, yeah, as you right. just did then, about Moroccans specifically. Yeah. yeah committing something like over 50% of crime now in Holland, all these different yeah. things. And they said that's why they need to. And the, the, the journalist was like, yeah. just, just sit there and shut up, basically. He couldn't answer the question. Um, and I think Calvin Robinson's arguments sound like the same, basically. Mm. So there's, there's parallels there. Mm. But I think Calvin Robinson, whether he'd seen Gert Wilder say this and said, look, this is the real issue here, yeah. and I'm going to address it head on. I was quite shocked. He needed to clarify what he said a bit better. Yes. Maybe, you, well, you know him, so you could email no. him and ask him. You know, if you could watch it, it would be, I don't know if you've seen it, but if you watch it, it would be good. Uh, so I just thought it was really interesting, but very interested to hear your views on it, really. Because I don't, I don't think you've really said that's outrageous, how dare he. You're saying... Not that, if he means yeah, foreigners. Yeah, you're saying there's an argument there based it's on... It's going to come. Yeah. That's it's, going, it's going to come over the next 10, 20 years. I, I'm surprised, Nick, because I actually thought you might have reacted differently to that so that's quite interesting to hear you react to that and it's got me thinking now about this because my initial reaction was that's extreme but then I'm just wondering now is this because I've been again I, I still haven't mm. been fully de-brainwashed from yeah. everything yet I want to be for deporting any British national yeah. who are born here well that's a threat to me and it's a threat to that's you true, isn't yeah, it yeah, yeah. my dad was an immigrant so I, I wouldn't be for yeah. that yeah. Um, but anybody who came here and as far as I'm concerned is still a guest in this country yeah then we have every right to ask you to leave any time you like. I suppose it's tricky if somebody's come here <laughs> as a guest and they've had a child here. That doesn't make them English. No, but it means the kid stays and they go. No, no, I mean the family goes. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, you're a hard man, mate. Um, let's move across the Atlantic now. Uh, something that I know you've commented on before, but I just want to raise it because... He is getting worse, and I think when I say that and I talk about across the Atlantic, people are either going to think I'm talking about Trump or Biden. <laughs> Knowing me, I'm not talking about Trump. Right. I'm talking about Biden. And his dementia, his mental lack of mental faculty, yeah. 
is getting uh, perceivably worse mm -hmm. on a day by day basis. There have been a number of occasions where he's, uh, and I, I've, I've seen this with mm -hmm. my mother in law who had dementia, and the behaviours are mm -hmm. remarkably similar. They often stand in one place for a period of time, not moving, not saying anything, just kind of observing vacantly. That's happened a few times. It happened when he was at a meal with Obama. Mm -hmm. Obama had to lead him off stage because mm -hmm. he was just standing frozen at the front of the stage. He had to put his arm around him and lead him. And it looked like yeah. a son leading his 92-year-old dad off, which is shocking, really, because Obama's now not been in power for eight years. Yeah. He still looks sprightly mm -hmm. and well. He was a rubbish prime minister, a rubbish president, but he's he's a healthy guy. So he led Biden off off stage. Um, then there was another incident where there were a parachuting event, and he just literally wandered off. Yeah. And I think it was George Maloney had. To, I think it was a G seven. No. George Maloney had to. We, we, and he he his his diction is now just just basically garbled rubbish yeah. basically, and he's getting worse and worse. And worse. And he's getting worse because of the pressure to put him under all the time. This is not helping him. Yes, yeah. But 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 it's getting worse and worse, and it's visibly worse now. Mm. I think even now some <coughs> of the Democratic uh, press are actually commenting on it. But nobody's doing anything about it, mm. and, and I just I just don't get it. Because of Trump derangement syndrome. Right. We've got to stick with him. We've got to pretend he's healthy because if we don't, it benefits Trump. Benefits Trump. Let's just lie and convince ourselves he's he's compensatory and he's amazing and he's doing everything and he's great. Because if we don't, we're going to get Trump, mm. and it's Trump derangement syndrome. But there's there's a debate coming up shortly. I don't know the date. I've got to watch it. That that's if it happens. I can't see it happening. You don't think it's going to happen? Like no? I can see something like. And a world emergency, they're bombing someone. They always bomb someone where they don't want a president somewhere. We're bombing someone. Um, he's been taken ill. Oh, you um, see, so you think an event may be manufactured? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, or, or, or they'll just say, oh, he's caught COVID. Um, please pray for the president. I can't see him. Yeah, because they're pushing birth flu at the moment. I can't they? see yeah. him stood on stage with... Trump. Oh God! I can't. Trump, Trump will just it, destroy him. It, everybody knows it, it was going to tear him apart. Yeah. And it'll damage the reputation of America. Yeah. That um, they've allowed it to get to this stage to have that man. It might be. It might not be a live debate. It might be we recorded, but they're not in the same room. We're going to give you five questions. You the same five questions. We're going to play. I can't see him stood there on stage doing a live debate. I can't see it. Even in a pre-recorded one, he's going to yeah. he's going to totally cock up, isn't he? Yeah, but you'll have take after take after take after take. Oh, I see. You mean? Take. Oh, I see. Right. Um, oh, so like... pre-recorded responses to questions. <laughs> yeah. um, or it'll be or it'll all be advertised he's doing it, and six hours before it'll be released to the press. He's got COVID. He's really ill. And um, the vice president. No, what do you want the vice president stepping in? Kamala Harris. Well, she'd be better than she. She she'd do better than him. She's despised. I know, but she'd yeah. do better than him. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. somebody will step. Yeah, up. that might be an idea to wheel her in as. as yeah. yeah, as a last minute, always oh, really poorly. He's fallen. He's. They'll do something where he'll gain sympathy as well. But how has this happened in the greatest, in inverted commas, democracy yeah. in the world, the most powerful nation in the world, and it still is, the most power. It's getting more powerful now. The most powerful. How has this happened? They because have ended the, peop up. the people who have the real power want a puppet, and Biden's the puppet. Yeah. Biden has no power, has no say, has no control. The people around him, the people above him, want him there because he's status quo. We tell him what to do, what to say, and we're running the country. Yeah. That's why he's there. And the answer, Nick? Is there any answer to it? I mean, you've called this before... Elder abuse, haven't you? It is elder abuse. I'm sure he wouldn't be as ill as he is now if they'd looked after him and they'd taken care of him and ah, all this pressure and stress yeah, and travelling. Yeah. And it, it, so it, that's an interesting take. So, so, so what you're saying is here, <laughs> it's more than elder abuse, just to, just pushing an, an old demented man around. He actually requires good treatment and he's not getting it. They're actually keeping it away. They're actually putting him under more pressure, putting him in situations that probably accelerate his dementia. That's what I mean. I've, I've, rather I've, than giving him treatment. Yeah, I'm saying they're making him worse. Yeah. Wow.
Wow. Can you, ma- can you imagine the pressure you'd be under if you were president today? Yeah. The immense pressure you, as a fit, healthy, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pressure you'd be under. Yeah. It ages every every president and yeah. prime minister. It ages them. Yeah. Because yeah. the pressure. Soon that's age, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it ages you because it just the weight on you. Yeah. He's a sick old man. Yeah. Of course, it's killing him. Yeah. I hadn't even thought about that aspect of it. You're at, they're actually accelerating it. But then, who do you hold to account on that? Basically, because I'm not sure who you hold to account on the that. party. Yeah. The, the the Republican Party. Yeah, because presumably there's a senior caucus in the party who will they, sit around and say, yeah. right, we need to... Yeah. They must, between themselves, say, this is crazy, this but guy's... they're being told, it's this or Trump. Hmm. We know this isn't great. We didn't expect him to deteriorate as quick as he has done. But if we replace him now, it goes right to the hand of Trump. Hmm. Uh, and and I think I think that really is the answer. Yeah. And, and if anything, it just underlines, I think, what you and I know, that, that the people in power, you know, it's a joke. The whole thing is yeah. a joke. It's a joke in this country. We've seen that from COVID, lockdowns, yeah. all that stuff. It's now clearly a joke in America yeah. that a man like that is the president of the United States. Yeah. So it just kind of, it must underline to lots of people, including young people in this country, that this whole thing is a farce. Yeah. The, 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 the institutions we've held so dear just don't exist anymore. I don't think they ever existed. Every generation complains about their politicians, their systems, their organisations, all the way down to the Roman times when they complained about the Senate. It's the same things we're saying. But as you got older, we look back on with rose-tinted glasses because the best years of our lives were teens, twenties. So we automatically think they were the best lives because they were our best lives. doesn't mean anything was better. They were just good for us. Um, I think the 1890s were pretty good, actually. They were for us because we lived through them and we were younger. Of people, and we I had, think for lots of people. Yeah, we yeah, lived through it. They were great. Yeah. Um, but we are where we are. I just hope Trump wins and I hope in the next election in the UK, so three, four, five years from now, we get a decent party to vote for. Yeah. It won't be for four or five years, I'm afraid. No. I, I, I don't think Labour will last five years. I think Labour will implode. I think they'll be in major trouble within two years. That's fine, as long as there's a proper alternative then. And that's what we need, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. So we need, we need an opposition. Well, you'll have time to build your party then. I shall you? do. You'll have time to build a party. To I've, I've already elected my deputy, <laughs> JK Valley. <laughs> so you're joining the Communist Party? The Communist Party of Great Britain, yeah. Um... <laughs> Finally, speaking about extreme parties, <clears throat> I, I am sick to the death, and maybe this is a quiz for our, our gentle listeners as well, but I'm going to ask you as well. So I'm sick of people talking about the hard right, the extreme right, for what are, in my view, fairly moderate people <coughs> and fairly moderate views, including Lawrence Fox, Cal- Calvin Robinson may be veering yeah. in that direction, but Lawrence Fox being called an extreme right wing yeah. person. Um, and I was reading something, I was reading, I stumbled onto some, thing called the truth uh, some one of these uh, one of these things supported by soros right. calling i think it was tommy robinson calling tommy robinson extreme right mm. right wing and all that sort of stuff just unashamedly so what i'm proposing is a new term for the right the right that you and i yeah. tend to favor which is the right right yeah. <laughs> because my view is the right we <coughs> the right that i'm interested in their views are right so rather than call them extreme, hard right, or whatever, we call them the right right. And I'm including in that people like Lawrence Fox, like Tommy Robinson, like J.K. <coughs> Rowling is in, yeah. in there as well, like Farage. Yeah. I'm including people who hold what I regard as sensible views that are good for this country um, and what, what we need to rectify the situation. So that's my proposed term Nick, the right right now what, what's your i know you've got a view on this or you've got, I, you've got an expression on this one i think we don't even engage in it it takes us away from the issues because the reason why they throw those labels at us hard right far right all that is because then we spend time then explaining that we're not that yes and we've just wasted the opportunity of fighting them on their turf mm. We're all far right. <clears throat> We've all been far right now for 20, 30 years. Anybody to the right of Jeremy Corbyn is far right. Mm. So we just say now, yeah, far right. I'm also a paedophile, by the way. 
So let's get all the insults over um, and let me answer your question. Now, that's how we need to deal with that now. Someone said to me a couple of years ago, and I thought it was really good. I thought they made it up, but it turns out people have been saying this for years. And they said, Nick, I'm not far right. I'm just right so far. Mm, right thought, so far. I like that. Yeah, right because so far. Because what we've been, what we people call the far right, are turning out to be correct. All their issues, everything they've been saying, is almost becoming mainstream now. Mass immigration, rape gangs, certain migrants are more likely to commit certain crimes. And it's like, well, it's all mainstream, or mainstream topics now. But 30 years ago, you was a skinhead. You was a Nazi for saying those things. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Very good. So, readers, if you'd, sorry, listeners, if you'd like to come up with any ideas we'd be interested in hearing on what the terminology should be for, for people that we're attending to support. Um, if you could like and subscribe to Nick's channel uh, going forward and Nick Buckley MBE whose motto is no hugging and no learning. No more pink and fluffy. No more pink and fluffy. Um, <coughs> please vote for Nick Buckley in Oldham East and Saddleworth and Nick best of luck on the 4th of July. Thank you very much. Cheers. Did you like that video? I think you did. Hit the bell, give it a big thumbs up, comment, and don't forget, I'm standing for election in Oldham East and Saddleworth. So please share this video, speak to your family and friends if you live in Greater Manchester, and if you live in Oldham East and Saddleworth, make sure you vote for me. Catch you soon.